Set on its hill, the village of Llantrisant seems above the hustle and bustle of modern life. It once had high hopes of becoming a major town. The church which stands in the centre of the village, along with the ruined tower of Llantrisant Castle, are all that remain of that dream, however, along with a meeting about to be held in the town hall. Here a mace, older than that of the House of Commons, is being readied to welcome a very special band of men to an ancient ceremony. These are the freemen, and hoping to be freemen, of Llantrisant. They are a living link with the days when this was a frontier area, brought over by invading Normans and resident Welsh. Well, they are descended from the original purchases of the borough of Llantrisant. And the borough of Hentrisson took shape in about 1246, which was when the Norman lords of Cardiff conquered Miskin. And after about a century, they got a charter. This court leet is convened to present claims of sundry persons to be admitted freemen of Hentrisson according to the ancient custom of the court beyond the memory of man. Filmed here for the first time, these proceedings of the court leet are to add new names to the role of Llantrisant Freeman, a very exclusive body. It is only uh, the sons of Freeman or the husbands of the daughter of a Freeman can be made Freeman today. When someone applies to become a Freeman, I send them a special form, an application form, and on that form a number of questions are asked, and they've got, then they've got to send uh, uh, their copy of their birth certificate, uh, if it's a son-in-law, marriage certificate, daughter's uh, birth certificate, uh, details of the father or father-in-law's parchment and his parchment number, and then I go through the records then to check. Son-in-law of the Reverend Canon Arthur James D. Williams, whose number was 1982. As the names of the new applicants are called, each must be identified by a related uh, freeman. Who identifies this man and presents him for admission to the trust? I do, sir. There are said to be some 2,000 Llantrisant freemen, and membership is enthusiastically sought from far and wide. <coughs> We get applications from people in America, Australia, we did some, two in America last year, three in Australia last year, and they're scattered right around the world. The freemen of the past had wide-ranging powers, but most disappeared with the loss of borough status over a hundred years ago. One of the few rights now is with regard to grazing on Chantress and Common. All the horses and the cattle on there belong to freemen. We closely guard that. Uh, no one else can put uh, horses or cattle on, 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 the, uh, on the common. Uh, over the years, there have people trying to be nibbling away at it, and they have not succeeded. So it is pride in history, rather than any material gain, that keeps the Llantris and Freeman tradition alive. And Noel Israel has no doubt about the future. They've gone on for centuries, and the, the feeling when you meet Freeman, when you meet uh, trustees, I know it will go on forever. Having this day... The new members take their oath of allegiance. The ancient ceremony is over. Trisant Ambeth a Chabri Ambeth. Ju Gadu Hevrin Hines. God save you. My grand, they're splendidly respectable today compared with what they used to be. Really? Up to 1832, of course, the only people with the vote in parliamentary elections in Huntress and were the, the free men. And then it wasn't as restricted as it is now. You could have it by 